Hello! In just a few minutes, this video will help you understand the basics of the VLAN system and take your first steps in working with it. VLAN is an ultimate platform for GPS tracking and IoT suitable for a wide range of business spheres such as passenger and cargo transportation, stationary unit monitoring, personal monitoring, delivery services, public transportation, and many others. With more system applications, the number of settings in the system inevitably increases. This video is created to make your first acquaintance with VLAN easier. Watch this video too. Learn how to create monitoring units, find out how to track units in real time, add a sensor to a unit, understand what geofences are and why they are needed, create your first report, and get familiar with the work of notifications. Let's get started! First, let's have a look at the VLAN monitoring interface. On the login page, select the language and log in using your username and password. First, check the time zone set in the system. To do so, click on your username in the upper right corner and select User Settings. On the General Settings tab, set the appropriate time zone and, if necessary, check the box Daylight Saving Time. On the Security tab, enter an email to receive messages when changing password in case you forget your current one or simply want to change it. Save the changes. Now you need to select the tabs you will be working with. Click on the three-dot icon in the upper right corner and check the boxes for Monitoring to track units in real-time on the list and on the map Reports for detailed analysis of information for a previous period of time Geofences to mark areas on the map Notifications to receive alerts when the state of the unit changes And units to add new units to the system VLON is used to track vehicles, machinery including stationary, people or animals. To do so, you need to install trackers on them and create a corresponding virtual unit in VLON. To do this, go to the Units tab and click on the New button. In the opened window, enter the name of the unit, device type, and its unique ID, a set of characters that will distinguish your tracker among all other devices of the model. VLAN supports many types of trackers. If you already have a tracker, install it on the monitoring unit according to the instructions. If you have any questions, you can refer to the frequently asked questions, link in the description below the video. You can use your smartphone as a tracker. To do so, install the Viatag application. It is available for iOS and Android. From now on, this video will be explaining how to work with Viatag specifically. In case of using your phone as a tracker, when creating a unit, select the Viatag device type and specify a custom set of characters as a unique ID. If the ID you have chosen is already taken, you will see a warning about this and you will have to specify another ID in the properties of the unit. After installing the Viatag app on your smartphone, you need to do some basic settings. First, make sure you have a stable internet connection. Second, log in using one of the available methods through a unique unit ID, username, or QR code. Since you have already created a unit in advance, use the authorization option using the unique unit ID. Then, allow the map use your smartphone's geolocation and to send notifications. This setup may be different for iOS and Android. Next, go to the application settings and choose the operating mode. For example, select standard to accurately track the movement of the unit while using moderate smartphone battery consumption. Launch the tracker to start transmitting information about the unit. Remember, if you have an Android device, your GPS must be enabled, or if you have an iOS device, the location access for the application must be allowed. Now you need to make sure that data from the tracker is coming into VLAN. For that, open the Monitoring tab in the top panel and click on the Add All Available button. 
the unit will appear in the list. You can assess the status of the unit by the color of the data recency and connection state indicators. The first one shows how many satellites the tracker has captured and how long ago data was received from the unit. The second indicator shows if the unit is connected. The green color indicates that the unit is connected, the number of satellites is sufficient and data was received less than 5 minutes ago. If the unit is not connected, double-check its internet connection and make sure GPS is enabled. Also, remember that in some cases there may be issues with determining coordinates indoors. To get a track of the unit, take a walk with your smartphone running the Viatech app. If you monitor the unit in Velon while it's moving, click on its name and you will see its motion on the map. A trace will follow the unit and a green arrow will appear in front of the icon of the unit to indicate the direction. The name of the unit may also be displayed on the map. On the bottom panel, you will find the icon of the lock. If a message is received from the unit, you will see a corresponding entry in the lock. This is another way to check if the unit is connected. After creating a virtual unit, the next important step is to add virtual sensors. These sensors show the system how to correctly transform and use incoming data. For instance, a temperature sensor will simply record the maximum and minimum values, while a fuel level sensor will analyze the readings for significant increases or decreases in level to detect fuel filling or theft. As an example, let's add a battery sensor. You can do this on the Sensors tab in the unit's properties. Give it a name, Battery Charge, for example. Select the custom sensor type since there is no specific type for batteries in VLON. Specify the unit of measurement as a percentage. To understand what to enter in the parameter field, visit the Gurtam.com website and specifically the Viatech page. Here you can see that the battery charge level is represented by the parameter B. Enter the parameter B in the appropriate field. Save the settings. The sensor is created. Geofences are areas on the map that can represent parts of a road with additional restrictions, delivery points, parking lots, warehouse territories, and etc. For our future report, let's create geofences that determine the beginning and the end of the trip. To do this, go to the Geofences tab on the top panel. On the past track, put a circular geofence with a radius of 100 meters with a center at the beginning of the track by double-clicking on the map. Name this geofence beginning and save the settings. Repeat the same steps to create the end geofence. Now everything is ready to create the report. Reports are used for detailed analysis of information for the previous period of time. They can include tables and charts that show daily mileage, fuel fillings, maximum temperature, speed violations, voltage changes, and more. Also, within the report, you can display graphical information on the map. Let's consider building a small report. Click on the New button and specify the name of the report template, for example, First Report. First, add a table with the trips type and select several columns to display – beginning, end, duration, and mileage. Enable the total option to get summary information in the settings of the table. Add another table with the geofences type this time and check several boxes – geofence, time in, time out, and duration in. In the table settings, specify the beginning and end areas that need to be analyzed. In the settings of the report template, on the map select Trip Tracks, for example. Save the resulting report template. Now in the upper left part of the screen, you need to select the created report template and the object you want to display a report for, as well as the time interval you are interested in. Execute the report. 
As a result, tables with the time of trips and the time when the unit entered the specified areas will be displayed at the bottom of the screen, and the track of the unit's trips will appear on the map. Now add a chart to the report template to track the change in the battery level of your smartphone. To do this, check the Custom Sensors box. Execute the report again. In the Report Results section, select Chart to see it on the screen. Using it, you can conveniently track the change in the smartphone battery level. Notifications help to immediately find out when the state of a unit changes. For example, a dispatcher or fleet owner can receive an SMS about a connection loss, a push notification about a fuel theft, or an email about exceeding the maximum allowed temperature in a refrigerator. Let's create a simple speeding notification as an example. Open the Notifications tab and click New. Next, select your unit, go to the next page and specify the speed as a condition for triggering the notification. Set permitted speed values from 0 to 1. This means that the notification will be sent when your unit exceeds the speed of 1 km per hour. Next, you should specify the way you want to receive notifications. For example, check the Notify by Email box and enter your email address. The default text of the notification can be used. At the end, provide the name of the notification. As a part of the learning process, we set a speed limit to 1 km per hour, which will be reached very often. To avoid it, set the max triggers number of notification to 1, for example. Save the notification. The next time the VATAC application is activated and the unit reaches the speed of 1 km per hour, you will receive an email. Now you have mastered basic VLAN settings. To learn more about how the system works, watch other videos on our channel. We recommend starting with the VLAN Video Tutorials playlist. You will find the link in the description. Good luck!